Hi, I'm Kelly Vandiver. I'm a presentation skills expert. And would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hi, Kelly. Uh, I'm Bhuvana Krishnan, and uh, I own a virtual assistant company. I um, use PowerPoint frequently to uh, market my business and services to potential clients. And I also help my clients tweak their presentations. So I'm eager to learn more about how to use PowerPoint more effectively. Excellent. Now, you do know how to use PowerPoint. That's already, right. Right. But you want to power up your PowerPoint. That's correct. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Well, yes. that's what we're going to be talking about. But before we get started, I do have a confession to make. I am a recovering PowerPoint abuser. Um, I, I'm going to show you some slides. Uh, there are some ones I did for a nonprofit organization, a community theater I'm involved with. And the content's not that important, but what I want you to get an essence of is how I used to do slide. Look familiar? That one looks, yeah, that looks very familiar. <laughs> I mean, look at that. I mean, can they, have you ever done one of these where you say, I know you can't read this, but. <laughs> okay, so that was me. Um, but I, I thought that there's probably a, a better way. Now, have you done slides oh, like this before? This is, this looks very normal for me. Right, so, so what's better about this than say the last one? At least things are like organized and bu bullet points. <laughs> you can read it. You can, right. There's less content. Right. Less content. Yes. And it's just like the key points, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, and as I was going through my evolution as a PowerPoint creator, I mean, this, this seemed better. Mm -hmm. Now, with this particular slide, I was doing a training class uh, back in my corporate days about generations in the workplace. And as I was looking at this slide, <laughs> I thought... You know, there's some really strong visual images in here. What if I represented that information a little differently? And so I started adding pictures into the slides. Right. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, that's more, um, you get the image. I like the other one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, and I asked my colleagues, did you like that better? And, and, and I got pretty resounding, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that does look better. Well, then I read um, the book Presentation Zen by Gar Reynolds, mm -hmm. and he took a different approach. And this is his approach. Strong visuals that fill the screen, just a couple of words on the, on the uh, slides. slides. And, and to me, this just, I, I don't know how yes. do you feel about this. This is very good. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. thought this approach is better. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so what we're going to talk about here today is how, how to do this approach. Now, now, some people ask, why should we even use PowerPoint? In fact, there was an article in the New York Times last year, and the title was literally, We Have Met the Enemy and He is PowerPoint. Have you, have you seen this article? No, I haven't. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, it was talking about a particular slide, and this is the slide. Oh my God. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a slide about the situation in Afghanistan. Somebody in the article even said, no wonder we have so much problems in Afghanistan. Um, but yes, this is, but this isn't that uncommon. You and I, we both came mm -hmm. from technology companies. Have you seen some slides that looked yeah. a little like that, right? Yeah. Um, Close. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not that uncommon to, to have these kinds of things. And that gives PowerPoint a bad name. People mm -hmm. say, why should we even use PowerPoint? Well, I asked several of my training audiences. I asked them the question, um, do you use PowerPoint internally within your organization? Do you do it externally, mm -hmm. internally and externally, or do you never use it? Now, what's your best guess? How many of the organizations and the people that were in there said that their organization never uses PowerPoint? Everybody uses PowerPoint. Exactly. So. Nobody has ever said they never <laughs> use PowerPoint, right? Yeah. So if it's going to be there then we, we need to figure out, is there a better way to do this? Mm -hmm. So it's not going Definitely. anywhere. How do, we, how do we make it better? The other thing is, if you are using PowerPoint, now you said you use PowerPoint um, as, a, as a way to get in front of prospects. You use it as a tool when you present mm -hmm. to prospects. And, and, right, um, as a marketing tool. Right, mm -hmm. right. So if it's going to represent you, you want to represent yourself. Uh, right, definitely. Be, as a professional that you are, mm -hmm. exactly. And same with your clients, as they represent themselves, or if people are, that are watching this are, are going to represent themselves within their organization, or they're going to represent their organization. Mm -hmm. So we want to have it represent as well. 
Um, the other thing about just having some vi uh, this visual approach is it adds some interest to the slide. So it's not just a talking head. There's something for folks to look at that's a little more interesting than a lot of words on, it, mm -hmm. on a screen. But we can also add some emotion. Now, I don't know, how do you feel about emotions in a, in a presentation? Yes, that's so important. If you see people that are yawning or losing interest, then you don't <laughs> like want to continue. Like this guy here, like right? Guy, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So uh, when we can add emotions to a presentation, mm -hmm. that's going to help people identify with mm -hmm. it. And sometimes it's, that emotion might be humor. And we can also evoke other emotions, too. If we want people to think really seriously about an issue, that help them identify with it more closely. So adding mm -hmm. emotions is, is another reason that uh, is good to use right. uh, visuals in our PowerPoints. Right. Like this slide. I, I, exactly, yes. like, like this slide. But I think one of the most important reasons to really use this approach has to do with retention of information. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in his book, Brain Rules, uh, John Medina talks about a particular study and they measured retention of information after a 72-hour period. Mm -hmm. And the first way they measured it is if the person heard it just orally. And here's some options, mm -hmm. and you, you in the audience can play along. Um, but who, which do you think is the amount of retention that people had after 72 hours from the, from the options here? How much did if they, they just did an oral, just orally, this was, right, information right. was oral, right. probably very low, 10%. <clears throat> that's right. It was mm -hmm. only 10%. Mm -hmm. And that's shocking to a lot of people. <clears throat> we think that yeah. when, people, when we speak, people listen, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, it is that low. Now, if you add a picture to your mm -hmm. slide, mm -hmm. get, get it, there's a slide on the picture. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's my little joke. Okay, but if you add a picture to the slide, if you add some visuals, what do you think the uh, retention increases to after 72 Pretty hours? Pretty high. What's your guess? Probably the D, probably 75%. It's actually not quite that high even, but it's... How, how does that it's, compare it's to pretty, the oral? It's pretty high compared to 10%. Right, right. It's a, quite yeah. an improvement. It's mm -hmm. not, maybe it's not as high as we'd want it to be, yeah. but it's a, it's a great improvement over if, it, if they just hear it orally. Now, take a, take a look at this uh, next slide. Um, this was based on a study that was done by Richard Mayer out of the University of California in Santa mm -hmm. Barbara. Now, wh what do you notice first uh, if you're looking at the bottom of the screen where it, it's got the two the two sample mm -hmm. slides, what, what, what's the obvious difference? Well, the first difference? one has a lot of content. Exactly. And the second one is pretty... It's just a picture, right? Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah. So what he did was he measured to see if there was a mm -hmm. difference. If the person is saying the same thing, that's mm -hmm. on the words are on the slides right. themselves, mm -hmm. or if there's just a picture, does that have any different impact, does it have a different impact mm -hmm. on whether or not people are going to retain the information right. mm -hmm. or whether or not they're going to be able to transfer that information to other situations, similar situations. Mm -hmm. And what he found was that if it just had the picture, mm -hmm. it actually had better mm -hmm. retention and better transfer of information. It's um, probably because people are not reading that Exactly. That's, why That's my it. theory too. Yes. That's my theory yes. too. Is if it doesn't have a bunch of words on there, mm -hmm. you can really pay attention mm -hmm. to what the person's saying and understand the, mm -hmm. the meaning. Well, he took it a step further, and what he did was he said, "What if I put two or three words mm -hmm. on the slide? Does that have Change. any impact?" Mm -hmm. Right. And what he found was it didn't really impact transfer, but it did increase retention. So it made it made it better. Better. That way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some words and some picture. Now, as if that's not enough evidence already, <laughs> there was another, another study that John Medina talked about in Brain Rules um, that measured something called the pictorial superiority effect. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they showed the, the people in this study 2,500 pictures, 2,500 pictures. Wow. And within days of seeing those pictures, mm -hmm. the retention rate of that information was 90%. So they could remember 90% of 2,500 pictures. Pretty wow. impressive, yeah? Wow, yes. Okay, but it gets better. <laughs> they did the same thing, and they measured it a year later, and people remembered. They still remember. I know, right? Right? In fact, I had a, a, an example of this. Uh, I was doing a presentation 
for uh, a group in Macon, mm -hmm. and they had asked me to come back and do the same presentation again. And remember that slide I used earlier, the one with the with a picture of the the slide in it. Yes. That that little girl on the slide, that's me when I was wow. a little kid. <laughs> that that picture was taken when I lived um, in base housing as a kid. Well, the first time I did it for the group in Macon, I mentioned that this was me, the little girl mm -hmm. on the slide. The second time I did it. The, I, I didn't mention that fact to the audience, but at the end of the presentation, the guy that had called me to do the presentation the second time said to the audience, he said, and you know how I know this stuff works? He says, remember that picture Kelly showed us earlier of the little girl on the slide? I remember that th from the first time I saw this presentation that that was her that was on the slide and that picture was taken when she lived in base housing as a kid. And what's interesting is that the period of time between those two presentations mm -hmm. was 17 months. Wow. So, so 17 months 100 later. 100 retention. Right, right. <laughs> so, so you can see that there's some value there of right. increasing retention. Okay, so if this is a better way to do presentations, why don't more people do, that, do it? Well, I have a theory. <laughs> and, and I think it's because of the default way that PowerPoint is set up. Now, if you were to just click into the box, mm -hmm. what happens? It just opens a new presentation, a new slide, uh -huh. and it adds text. Right, right. So if I, even though it's got the little icons on there to yeah, add the other kinds of things, the default is text. Right, the default is text. So right. when you just click on it, it just starts putting the text in. Even if you go to add a picture, what happens? Yeah, it shrinks the picture. Right, right. The picture, and the picture doesn't look very... There's a lot of white space. Right, right. Yes. You've got all that white space, mm -hmm. and the picture is centered, and mm -hmm. it restricts how big the picture can right. be. That's, that's the default way that it does it. So uh, what, I, what I'm recommending is we get rid of the default, and, and we look at how do we make the pictures bigger, and then just add our two or three yeah, words. So what we're going to talk about in the rest of this course is what is the process we go about to do this? How do we find these pictures that we're talking about mm -hmm. using? Um, how do we make those pictures really sing? How do we put it in a way that it, it's gonna represent yourself, yourself really well? Mm -hmm. And then we'll also talk about, well, what if you have to do charts and graphs? How do you yes. do that? Mm -hmm. And are there some other cool and funky things that you can do with PowerPoint? And we'll talk about those as well in this course. Okay, very good, I'm excited. All right, me too, yeah. let's go. Yeah.